Welcome back to Crazy Dave's Crew. Today is July 15th, and you are watching on This Day in History. On this day in history, in 1521, Juan Ponce de Leon, the Spanish explorer and conquistador who searched for the Fountain of Youth and the first European to discover Florida, dies at the age of 61. Clement Clark Moore, the U.S. professor and author of Twas the Night Before Christmas, was born in New York City, New York, in 1779. On this day in 1799, the Rosetta Stone is found in the Egyptian village of Rosetta by French Captain Pierre Francis Bocard during Napoleon's Egyptian campaign. In 1868, William Thomas Morton, the first dentist to use ether, dies. Margarine is patented by Hippole Megamores for use by the French Navy in 1869. In 1883, Charles Sherwood Stratton, or General Tom Thumb, who achieved great fame as a performer under circus pioneer P.T. Barnum with a height of only 40 inches, dies of a stroke at 44. In 1870, Georgia becomes the last Confederate state to be readmitted to the United States. In 1888, Bandai Volcano in Japan erupts for the first time in 1,000 years. The British National Health Insurance Act goes into effect in 1912. In 1916, the Boeing Company was formed as Pacific Aero by William Boeing in Seattle, Washington. On this day in 1922, the first duck-billed platypus is publicly exhibited in the U.S. at the New York Zoo. U.S. President Herbert Hoover cut his own salary 15% in 1932. In 1939, Clara Adams set the unofficial record for passenger travel around the world via commercial air travel. In 1940, Robert Wadlow, the world's tallest man, standing at 8 foot 11.1 inches, dies at 32. In 1946, Linda Ronstant, an American singer and actress, was born in Tucson, Arizona. Alcoholics Anonymous was founded in Britain in 1948. Enrique Basilio was born in 1948. She was an Olympic hurler and became the first woman to light the Olympic flame in Mexico in 1968. In 1950, Ariana Huffington, Greek-American author, syndicated columnist and creator of the Huffington Post, was born in Athens, Greece. In 1959, the U.S. Steel Strike of 1959 begins leading to a significant importation of foreign steel for the first time in United States history. Mariner 4 sends back the first pictures of Mars in 1965. In 1968, One Life to Live, an American soap opera, premiered on television. On this day in 1972, Honky Chateau becomes Elton John's first number one album in the U.S. It includes the hit Rocket Man. In 1980, Johnny Bench hits his 314th home run as a catcher, which breaks Yogi Berra's record. Linda Ronstadt debuts as Mabel in Pirates of Penzance in 1983. In 1984, John Lennon's I'm Stepping Out is released posthumously. The movie Die Hard, directed by John McTiernan and starring Bruce Willis and Alan Rickman, is released in 1988 in the U.S. After 2,216 consecutive games at shortstop, Cal Ripken goes to third on his on this day in 1996. In 2003, AOL Time Warner disbands Netscape Communications Corporation. The Mozilla Foundation is established on the same day. Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, the sixth film based on the books by J.K. Rowling, is released worldwide in 2009. In 2016, Stranger Things debuts on Netflix, created by the Duffer Brothers, starring Winona Ryder, David Harbour, Finn Wolfhard, and Millie Bobby Brown. And in 2018, an eight-year-old girl finds a pre-Viking era sword in Vigostern Lake, Sweden. The internet quickly proclaims her Queen of Sweden. And on this day in 2019, we celebrate National Gummy Worm Day. Before we can talk about gummy worms, we really need to talk about gummy bears. The gummy bear was invented in Germany in 1922 by Haribo, a German confectionery company 
founded in 1920 by Jonas Hans Regal Sr. Gummy bear candies came in a broad variety of fruit flavors and were intended for both adults and children to enjoy. From these initial gummy candies, many other types and shapes came into existence, but none of them could take the crown from the popular gummy bear. The candy was in bear form and wasn't shipped to America until around 1981. It was then that American candy manufacturer Trolley developed the gummy worm. The intent was to give children something fun to eat while mildly shocking parents. Gummy worm making back then was similar to today's processes. An artist first sketches the character before carving the sketch into a small plaster mold. Once in the factory, candy makers pour ingredients such as gelatin, sugar, and glucose syrup into large boilers. The ingredients are then heated before colors and flavorings are added. The mix is then poured into the molds and left for up to five days. Did you know? Beeswax is added to make the worms a little less sticky. The creation of gummy worms has spawned a gummy candy revolution of sorts. Today, gummy candy lovers enjoy gummy rings, gummy snakes, and gummy cola bottles. But despite the variety, gummy worms remain the second most popular snack of its kind. Behind, of course, gummy bears. To keep the edge, some candy companies have introduced different flavors and sizes of gummy worms. A company called VAT19 makes a 3 pound, 26 inch gummy worm. The candy features a ribbed body, a 5 inch girth, and dual flavors including cherry, orange, blue raspberry, lemon, pineapple, and green apple. The giant worm contains a whopping 4,000 calories. They also have a shelf life of a year, so you have time to nibble. What do you call it when worms take over the world? I don't know. Global warming. What do worms leave around their baths? I don't know. The scum of the earth. What do you get if you cross a worm and an elephant? I don't know. What? Very big holes in your garden. What did the woodworm say to the chair? I don't know. It's been nice knowing you. Why are glowworms good to carry in your bag? I don't know why. They can lighten your load. What do you get if you cross a glowworm with a python? I have no idea. What? A 15 foot strip light that can strangle you to death. Uh oh. How do you make a glowworm happy? I don't know. How do you make a glowworm happy? You cut off its tail and it'll be delighted. Oh. But what is the maggot army called? I don't know. The Apple Corps. Oh! Why didn't the two worms get on Noah's Ark and the Apple? I don't know. Why? Because everyone had to go in pairs. What kind of computer does a worm have? I don't know what. A Macintosh. Why do worms have trouble getting up in the morning? I don't know. Why? Because the early bird catches the worm. How can you tell which end of a worm is which? I don't know how. Tickle it in the middle and see which end laughs. What did the worm say to the other when he was late to getting home? I don't know. What did he say? Where in earth have you been? So, how exactly do you celebrate Gummy Worm Day? Well, coming up next, we're going to have Dave, Shelby, and Nick compete for prizes. We're going to have a plate full of whipped cream that has worms in it. Using nothing but their mouths, they must fish out the three gummy worms and put them in a cup. This should be fun. You may all open your eyes now. What you see in front of you is a plate covered with whipped cream and a cup. What you are going to be doing, without using your hands, you have to fish three worms out of your plate and put them in the cup without using your hands. Are you ready?
Okay, well, happy gummy worm day. This has been another episode of On This Day in History right here on Crazy Dave's Crew. I hope you've enjoyed. Be sure to click that subscribe button right down there and make sure you click that bell so that you get notified anytime we put up a new video. And also, be sure to check us out on Facebook at Crazy Dave's Crew. And you can find us on the web at cdcrew.com. Be sure you stop by and check us out. Y'all have a great day. We'll see you next time right here on Crazy Dave's Crew. My turn. Welcome back to Crazy Dave's Crew. Today is June... June 5th. June 5th. It is June 5th. June 5th is a really cool day because on June 5th, who knows what happens on June 5th? That's what makes it cool! Okay. Francis Bocard during Neapol Napoleon's. Neapolitan. Neapolitan. You want some ice cream, honey? <laughs> In 1946, Linda Ronstant, an American singer, Stranger Things debuts on Netflix, created by the Duffer Brothers, starring one. Okay, I'm gonna know that. The internet quickly proclaims. In gummy bear candies came in a broad variety of fruit flavor, then were intended for both adults and children to enjoy. A joy? A joy. <laughs> it was then that American candy manufacture manure. <laughs> candy manure. That would definitely shock some pants. <laughs> the ingredients are then heated before colors and flavors are adding. <laughs> are adding. Well, I caught that I needed to put an ing in there, so I just threw it at the end. <laughs> Do that again? <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> How can you tip? Ha ha ha!